So today we will be looking about YOLO, which is uh, an image detection. Uh, one of my one type of machine learning model like which is used for image detection and for image related tasks and so let's see the introduction yolo means you only look once which is it's kind of related with you know the effectiveness of the model or this uh yeah the efficient character of the model it's state-of-the-art real-time object detection algorithm it's introduced in 2015 and uh, there's nothing we can do with this history but uh it's formed or started after the uh, publishing of the re the famous research paper, which is you only, you only look once, and it's a unified real time detection uh, object detection. So, what is the point? Is now we're kind of familiar with classification and regression model of types of machine learning models, right? So, YOLO is one type of model that is used for. I mean. Uh, during past times, they used the classification method for image uh, detection, okay? Uh, so the author of this paper, he told that object detection problem as a regression problem instead of classification task. So for when we came to the class, the regression part, there are different types of models, right? This, the neural networks that we've seen, the, the um, vanilla linear logistic regression model and different of them so one of them is saying in which is convolutional neural network which it's a type of neural network but specifically used in image detection or image related uh, regression tasks so uh, it's it is that uh, it is recommended to use the regression models rather than classifying an image as two or as three just as specified number of things it's better to do the neural networks in um, email classification that was the preferred idea so that is where yolo had originated from so object uh, there so there is a difference between image classification and object localization right so what is the difference and since uh, this is this is how we're going we're going to know why YOLO is that important when we can differentiate between the two things or when we know that the two things are different. So in object detection, it's just a technique. It's used in computer vision for identification and localization of objects within an image or video, okay? When, while we say image localization, it's the process of identifying the correct location of one or, or multiple objects using bounding box, which corresponds to rectangular shape and round the objects. So this process is sometimes confused with image classification or image recognition, which aims to predict the class of an image or an object uh, within an image into one of the categories or classes. So as I mentioned earlier, earlier there is a difference between the image classification that we used to know before, which we're going to uh, have a very limited amount of classification for our image and we're going to train the data on that class on the classification model and it will classify us to, towards that uh, one of the trained uh, labels right so there's a difference between that the image classification in the image the localization and image i mean uh, object uh, image uh, image classification and object localization so when we say image or object localization it's going to localize or put a specific place where that image is found uh, actually object we can say it is an object since it's not just a classified or uh, a specific amount of uh, image it's not going to classify only, only them so it's going to put a bounding box or an indication that there is an object in that specified space which means it, it identified an object from that whole image but when we say that the image classification it's just going to classify a specific image as something or uh, as, x, as x or as y so why do we use yolo it's speed first of all it's uh, very fast and uh, it's like um, it contains accuracy with that speed okay with a good generalization amount and it's also open source when we say good uh, generalization it's as i mentioned before we're not going to put a specified number of uh classified items okay so yolo is already trained in different types of image and in different types of objects so that it can identify any type of object in an image okay 
So uh, especially on this common types of objects like a house, car, any items. Uh, so every uh, common things that we can uh, express them as an image or as an, as an object I need. So it is already trained on that, on that type of uh, data. So it's not going to put, it's going to have a good generalization, generalization on every other types of things that are going to be uh, classified as an object. Okay, so it's not just classifying into something and some other thing. So it's speed, it's detection accuracy and good generalization. Also, it's an open source, which means it's already a pre-trained model that we all can use. So this, uh, those are one of the main reasons that we prefer that will make us prefer YOLO uh, for image detection or for tasks related with image. So how does uh, YOLO object detection work? Are we good? You can hear my voice, right? Yeah, okay. So uh, how does YOLO object detection work? The first one is it's uh, somehow it's good to know like behind using every machine learning models and every type of models, it's good to know the concept that is the point, but uh, we're not going to do the calculation. We're not going to do the deep uh, process, but we need to know the, uh, the common, uh, you know, we, you, we need to know the definition and we, ne we need to know how it works somehow. And we expect that from you, as I said, I have just mentioned that in the deep neural network uh, sessions too. So uh, the first one is the algorithm works based on the following approach. The first one is residual blocks, um, which is, uh, for example, let's say we have just inputted an image uh, of a house or something. So it's going to divide them to equal different parts, okay? Uh, it starts from there. So. Uh, it's uh, before detecting or before trying to detect anything, you will divide every image into unequal, unequal rectangle parts. And then there's the bounding box re regression. So the next step is to determine bounding box. We have mentioned that one of the unique um, characteristics of yellow is it will develop a bounding box for, for the image, right? So it is to, it will determine the bounding box which corresponds to rectangle highlighting all the object in this image. So we can have as many bounding box as there are objects within a given image. So the number of objects are going to determine the number of bounding box that we're going to have. And YOLO determines the attribute of this bounding box using a single regression module in the following format. So like um, after having a bounding box or after developing a, a bounding box for every object, we also have a representation of that specific object, what, or it's called class, actu class actually, uh, what that class stands for. So uh, the regression model of the uh, YOLO or the, simple reg the single regression mo module can be expressed using this. So here we have PC, BX, BY, BH, BW, C1, and C2, right? So PC corresponds to the probability of the score of the grid containing an object. So the first one is, since we're building the bounding box for every object or, yeah, depending on the number of objects in that image, it will, we need to judge whether that object or that box is containing an object only. So this is the probability. So if the probability is greater than some values, then it's considered as an object. And then on the point of that uh, uh, object that is uh, estimated as an object actually with the probability, Bx and By are the X and Y coordinate of the center of the bounding box with respect to the enveloping grid cell. So uh, the, the, after like judging with, if those things are uh, a bounding, I mean an object or not, or not, we're going to develop a bounding box with respect to enveloping grid sets. So yeah, like the, there is the BX and the B, BX and the BY, which will determine the center of the bounding box, and BH and BW, which will determine the height and the width of the bounding box, box that is going to be drawn. And finally, there is C1 and C2, and this will determine the class. So if that thing is determined as an object, what type of object is it? So is, is, is that a person, is that a car, a cat, an animal, or something? Actually, it's not going to just generalize animal as an animal. It's going to specify them as a cat, dog, and things like that. The other step is the intersection over unions, or IOU for short memory. So there might be, you know, while drawing the, the, 
the it's the bounding box we might have some inter intersections between the images that are found behind each other or things like that okay so most of the time single object in an image can have multiple grid box i'm sorry it's uh, before the bounding box we're going to build a grid box right so the box that we're going to classify every image into equal parts so yeah they might have after the predicting the probability of that being an image they might have some intersection between them so we need to include uh, if they are uh, just uh, predicted as an image as an object we need to have uh, they need to be included in one of the bounding box right so if there's an intersection between them uh, the the iou will have the user defines its iou we will define the iou section and it can be for instance 0 0.5 then YOLO computes the IU for each grid sets, which is the intersection area divided by the union area. And the, the point is that after we have set a certain amount of IOU number, the model or YOLO will um, calculate, uh, compute the IOU for each grid sets, and it will define or it will finally say that it needs to be included on this part or on this bounding box or on that bounding box, box okay? And then in maximum suppression, sometimes setting a threshold for the IOU is not always enough because an object can have multiple box with IOU, okay? You might have with IOU beyond the threshold. So, and leaving all the all these box might include a noise. So, here is where we can use NMS or no maximum suppression keep to keep all the boxes with highest probability score of detection. So, rather than being including all the all the the all the images or all the objects greater than the IU value in a certain bounding box, we're just going to go with the higher probability or higher score for detection. Okay. So if we understand the common Okay, am I back? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I was out, sorry. It was the connection. I am back, right? You can hear my voice now. Okay. So, yeah, let's see. We, we already it is shared how to install these things. Uh, uh, so, the major thing or the major procedures that we need to follow is already mentioned on the task document. Um, challenge documents. So we've installed uh, OpenCV, Torch version, TensorFlow. So then we have cloned the GitHub uh, this repo, which is, uh, we're specifically using YOLO v5. So there are different versions of YOLO actually. There is the YOLO 4. Actually, we've reached the YOLO 8 by now. So it depends on the number of, uh, since the, if the version is increasing, mostly the it will need more computational power. And also, it might be able to to identify or to detect many types of objects. Okay, so by cloning the, this GitHub folder or I'm mean, repo, we can go to the specific file, which is YOLO v5. This is the folder. Okay, then we have tried to install all the requirements from there. There are, in my case, there are some requirements that are not uh, that would not align with. Um, with my collab structure so but it sometimes it might bring an error so you need to install uh, in my in my case the problem was the pillow it's uh, it it is not it can go with the pillow version that i have but it's it, uh, sometimes it doesn't affect the other processes you're not going to use every uh, package that are listed in the requirement folders so the point is this is the line um you can do it manually, but inside, what is the point of using the or cloning the repo? It's, you know, it's already here. The, the how to build the models, how to extract. Okay, this is not there. You will do that. So, where to put your data? Okay, every aspect of the model, how to train if you need to train. So, there's this thing. So, I have just mentioned that YOLO is used mostly used for uh, general. Uh, 
object detection, right? It's already trained in different or many uh, <coughs> in uh, different types of objects, right? So we don't need to put that. Uh, we can be we can just go and if if the data that we want to classify or what that we want to label is a common data, we can just go with it. But there is another scenario where we want we might need for uh, our data to be classified as a unique thing, okay? In that case, we need to train uh, the model. So that's model training in machine learning. So we need to, um, in that case, yeah, we can, we, it's also easier to do the training process since all the folders are uh, ready here. But in our case, we can just use the pre-trained YOLO model and do our uh, process. So we can, this code here will help us to go to the detect.py, which is which includes the model or here, which includes the model and the training procedures, and it will apply the YOLO model in our data. And from uh, the the, the data that we want to detect or that we want to um, see is need to be found in the source. Uh, we, we're going to indicate that inside the source, which is data slash image, because it's already here inside the data folder here. There is the image. So there are two images here, the bus.jpg and the, here this image and we got, we got Zidane. Okay, Zidane, it's Zidane, I'm sorry. So we got those two images and those are the data or the, yeah, the data that we want to classify. And then we might need to uh, save the data or the, after the detection process or after applying the detect.py, we, we need to save uh, the results, right? So the results are here, they are saved. We, we, we are saying that save the results. There is a folder called results. Yeah, here. So there is the run one, run 12, run 30. So maybe we can save them inside run one. And while running this, so we can maybe delete those folders. Okay. Now let's just see. Let's just run this line and. There's already two labels or two emits found from the data source. So it's going to be two results that are saved from it had created a run 14, I guess, saying that, yeah, run 14 is created now. So just checking to run 14. Yeah, here inside the labels, we can get, we can get the password JPG, yeah, which is the detected version of the first image. Okay, we have just shown the car and the persons alone, and also in the Zida, we can see Zida in the other person, and even his caravat here, uh, being both of them being detected as an object. Okay, so we can delete. Uh, it's, it is we can delay the run part and generating uh, the run 40 part and generating new uh, object detections. It will, uh, it will create yeah, the new folder here. So yeah, after detecting the image, we need to extract. So there's uh, in the document, what do we mean by the, ex the extraction is it's already labeled. You can see that it's if there's a person, there's a person, there's a tie and there's a tie, okay? It's already labeled. It's not that we have trained the model as a to classify tie, to classify a person or a card in this case. 
a bus specifically not even a car it's a bus it's just within the model so um, it's already a labeled information so taking the label of those uh, taking the 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 extracted labels of those images with this label we can extract the data or the persons from here so in our case you can put uh, there's the image or the yeah the image that you've scrapped from the telegram data right that is related with the medical business so you can put them under the data folder here and emits it's already uh, uh, we have already the layout and then we can do the detection we are just support. we don't need to change anything even okay so yeah the, just like this we can make the detection and we can go to the extracting that parts of the uh the extracting the specified parts of the detection or the object detection that we will help us for our task okay so do we have any question it seems like women's session since we're all girls okay see you okay then yeah um good luck with scrapping the data and things like that then you can go to the yellow and make the detection and yeah do the other steps thank you everyone for being here bye thank you